Hello, my name is Wayne Elderton, and I'm the head course facilitator for Tennis Canada Coaching Certification in BC and the tennis director at the North Vancouver Tennis Centre. We're going to look at tactical technical training, which I like to do through a system that I call situation training, which links tactics and techniques together. Situation training is based on the premise that tennis uses open skills. Open skills require perception, problem solving, and decision making before applying technique. In an open skill, technique is how a player solves tactical problems that they encounter during play. Successful technique in tennis is less about perfecting perfect form as it is about adaptation. To empower players to learn the open skill of tennis, the goal of situation training is about expanding the library of situations players can handle at their level of play through effective and efficient technique and to build a foundation for success at future levels. Training that focuses on isolated stroke technique disconnected to the situations that they occur doesn't really equip players for the reality of tennis. The tactical technical section of a training session is the central piece of the whole session. When we look at the steps of a situation training session, tactical technical training fits in after the fundamental volume training section. It's important that a, coach, a coach is systematic in how they approach situation training. There's so many situation possibilities, a coach can get lost in all the options, which can hinder development. In order to coach effectively, coaches need to have a practical working definition of what a situation is and all the elements involved. To link tactical and technical training together, we need to understand that tactics occur within specific situations. Defining those situations allow coaches to understand the elements they need to develop. In the Canadian system, the core of every situation is what we call the shot cycle. And the shot cycle has two halves. The first is everything a player must deal with to receive the ball. This creates the situation and presents a problem for the players to solve. It includes the ball received, the location of the players, and the perception or the anticipation that can occur. The second half is the response to the situation. It's where the player solves the problem with their projection of the ball. It includes which stroke they use, the characteristics of the ball sent, and the phases of play. The phases of play are what I call micro tactics and include neutral offense and defense. And then finally, there's the recovery before the entire cycle repeats again for the next shot. One way to construct a system for situation training is to base the situations around locations and space on the court. I like to call this grid work. For red court, the grid allows all sorts of playing and training possibilities. For playing, there are three basic level options which correspond to the three different levels of red tennis development in Canada. Red one, or the bronze level, is on a short and narrow court. Red two is on a full court, but with the adult single sideline as the red baseline. That's the silver level. And red three, the gold level, uses the adult double sideline as the red court baseline. For training, changing the space and the shape requires all sorts of, or gives you all sorts of great possibilities. It produces an environment that promotes adaptation. It also allows for tactical development, like, for example, defining cross courts, down the lines, short, deep, etc. The orange court grid promotes the same flexible learning environment. Grid areas can be marked out or combined for training. For advanced orange players, the grid can be expanded to include a center lane. Controlling space 
is a foundation for tactics. The green full court grid is more sophisticated with baseline to net zones and side to side lanes that provide a tactical location map that can help every aspect of the game. Using the grid can help with skill adaptation by changing the spaces from wide to narrow, etc. It also helps with constructing patterns. The key to situation training is to empower players to perform neutral offense and defense in each location of the court. Let's look at an example of a training session about solving and creating problems in the midcourt zone in the center lane. The example is going to be with nine and 10 year old green ball players. For the tactical technical part of the training session, we use situation training. The goal is to expose players to situations that occur in various parts of the court in order to expand their library of situations that they can successfully handle at their level of play. During the training, they experience neutral offense and defense in each location of the court. And we actually use a grid system to map out the different court locations. Here we go. Okay, guys, here's the sitch. So we're imagining that we're playing. We were in a rally at the baseline, okay? You hit your approach shot and you come up and you find yourself in the middle of the court. And we're gonna play a game called Sherlock Holmes. So you are trying to solve the mystery. Once you're here, you're Sherlock Holmes. You're gonna have a, a mystery to solve. What can I do with different balls that I'm gonna receive here? How do I solve this mystery? So we're gonna play a game with that, all right? The girls, you are Sherlock Holmes, your team Sherlock first. So you go down there, one of you on the red dot, I put a marker down there and one of you touching the wall. So go ahead, head down there, down the other end, go, go, go. One on the red dot, one touching the wall. Okay, you guys are not team Sherlock, you are team villain. So you're gonna just try to knock out the Sherlocks. So Brandon, you're gonna touch the wall. Christian, you're gonna be up just over here at the baseline behind me. Okay, so here's how it's gonna work. You're at the dot, uh, you're gonna pretend you've hit an approach shot and you're gonna come up and split step right on where that other marker is. So go ahead and come up and split step on the marker. Now from there, I'm gonna send you a bunch of different shots. You're just gonna play out the point, all right? And just because you guys are team Sherlock, if you win, you get to stay for one extra point and then you'll trade. All right, and Team Villain is trying to, to knock you out. For you guys, what's gonna happen is as soon as you win three points, not in a row, just three points total, you go knock out the Sherlock that's against the wall and trade with them. All right, I'll help you out. So you ready to play? Here we go, you're just behind me. And when she hits it, you can, you can move. All right, so go from that red dot and go. Boom, okay. Let's play it. Okay, switch it up. That's one for you and you guys trade. Go ahead, you guys trade. You trade, go ahead. Boom. Uh-oh, <laughs> we're out again, okay. Trade up, let's trade it. Boom. Oh, <laughs> okay. That's it, you got another point. You guys are having an easy time here. Here we go, go. Boom, okay. Oh no, and again, keep going. Trade it up. Go. Woo! <laughs> All right, next up. Go. Play it out. Keep playing anywhere, anywhere, keep playing. All right. The neutral offense and defense options the coach picks are based on three elements. It can be a common situation, shots that occur more commonly than others. You can pick because of how easy that the shot is to implement. You can also pick the importance of the shot. 
shots that are critical to the outcome of a point or a match. For example, an overhead is not that common, but it is very important. All right, so we played the game and you guys were Sherlock Holmes. You hit your approach shot, you came up and you found yourself here, right? Now, what are some of the things that were happening when you were here? There was different kinds of shots you were receiving. Anyone can tell me which ones? Yes, Christian. Okay, so there was hard drives that were kind of at you. Good, anything else? Yes, Samu. Yes, they were down at your feet sometimes. Good, there was another one too that you saw. Yep, okay, a higher ball. All right, so what's gonna happen is we have some situations where it's offense, it's a high weak ball, and you know what? It would be a good time to do your swing volleys. Okay, forehand and backhand swing volleys because the ball's high, right? And when the ball's just being driven at you, then it's good just to take their pace and just direct it to the other side. That's all you need to do. It's just a neutral shot. You just have to take their pace and direct it to the other side. Okay, and then sometimes you get balls that are really tricky. They're down at your feet. And when you're down at your feet, it's kind of defensive. And again, we want to make sure that we can just get it away from their, them and not have a pop-up that then they can kill. Okay, so those are the three things happening. We're going to play one more time and what you're going to do is you're going to call before you hit the ball. Is it just neutral? Is it an offense situation that I can attack more? Or is it defense and I just got to try to survive? Okay, so go to the positions you were, we'll play again. And let's call out offense, neutral, or defense. Okay, remember you're going to call out. Is it offense, neutral, or defense? Go. Neutral. neutral. I know, that was hard. <laughs> that was an easier ball. Okay, who's up? Yeah. Okay, go. Okay. All right, you called what? Attack, that's fine. Attack or offense, either one. Attack, yeah, oh, almost a good, a good swing volley, that's the idea. Oh, sorry, sorry, start again, go ahead. Go. What's this? Defense, down at your feet. Yeah, and see, popped it up. Okay, count your scores, go. What was that? Just neutral. You're just taking his power and you need to redirect it. Okay, go ahead. What's this? Oh, that was neutral too. Okay. Go ahead, go ahead over here. Okay, go. Oh, sorry, clear the court. Thank you. All right, go. What's this? Attack? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, you're lucky on that one. Was it an attack or was it more just neutral? Neutral. Okay, what's this? Neutral. Yes, that's the way to do it. Oh, I like that volley to the other side. For the training, the coach picks whichever of the neutral offense or defense shots to be worked on first. The coach can either pick one that is giving the group the most trouble or one that the group will actually have the easiest time with if they want a quick win to boost players' confidence. All three shots will be trained before moving on to another grid location, and it may take more than one session to actually get to all the shots. So that was great. You guys found yourself here, and again, there was three different situations that were happening. There was higher balls that you could attack. There was balls that at your feet that were tricky and then you had to make defense. There was balls that you just had to take their pace and redirect it a little bit just to stay neutral. So the one that we're going to focus on today is, is that one. Is It's kind of a, a, a more of an arrow. It's driving at you and you're just going to take their shot and direct it to the opposite side. Okay, you're going to take their shot and direct it to the opposite side. And the trick is it's going to be like a catch. It's like I'm going to catch the ball and then I'm going to carry it over. Okay, I'm going to catch the ball just like this was a big glove 
and I'm just going to carry it over. I don't want to add a lot of pace to it because that's too risky and I don't want to just stop my racket and it pops up. Okay, so I'm just going to catch the ball and carry it. That's what we're going to practice. So again, you're going to catch it and then you're going to carry it to me. I'm going to catch it and carry it to you. Catch it and carry it. Good. Now, we're also going to do on both sides. You can go two hands on the left side that you're trying to catch it like this and then you're going to carry it over. Okay, and then that's it. I'm going to catch it on this side and we switch back and forth. Okay, I catch it and carry it over. And then you catch it, boom, and carry it over. Okay, let's try to play. Okay, grab your rackets and let's have all four on the other side. Okay, Kristen, you're at the service line. Yeah, and Brandon, you're at the service line. Okay, and Gabby behind Christian, Amu at the baseline behind Brandon. Okay, and it's going to go like this. Okay, I'm going to send it to you, and instead of catching with your hand, imagine your racket is a glove. Catch it, and you're, Christian, you're going to put it on this half of the court, and Brandon, you're going to put it on that half of the court. Okay, just catch it. And carry out. Yeah, just push a little, push through a little bit more. Catch it and carry. Yeah, and over to here. So make sure you're getting on the outside of the ball for your racket angle. That's that. Catch it. Okay, and again, where's that racket angle? That's it. You got the racket angle going to that side. And again, you're not. Let's play it out. Nice angle. Way to go. Next up. Go. Just catch it and play to the open court. Okay, Brandon, that was a good catch, but get on, I have to get on the inside of the ball, so you're going to have to turn a little more for that backhand, and Christian, same deal when you do it. Go. That was just, just using my power and sending it to the open court, that was perfect. Go, what's it look like on the backhand? Ah, but too much down the middle. Okay, the backhands are tricky. Go. How do you do those backhands? No, that was over here. <laughs> Which side do you guys want to hit to? Yeah, so you're going to have to get on the inside of the ball. Go. How do you do that? That was the one. Way to go, Brandon. Very, very nicely done. Okay, how do you do this one? That's to the open court. Excellent. Oh, see, now it's almost too easy for you guys. Wow, they're, they're kind of good. Go. You guys are going to get a chance to do it. Oh, okay, bump. Go ahead. Yeah, that's three. Okay, how do you find the side of the ball? That was the side, but again, did you see your swing a little bit? Just catch it. Go, Brent. Okay, go, Gabby. Okay, just catch it, catch it, catch it. Nice. Woo! Big advantage. Okay, so did you see that when you got there, okay, if I just took their power and caught it, then I'm not hitting it off the frame, and just redirect it to the open side, it was, it was actually really good. That actually took their power, I just redirected it, kept myself out of trouble, it didn't pop up, they couldn't attack me. See how that works? So that was a perfect Sherlock. You, you solve the mystery of the neutral ball. When you get a neutral ball, how do you redirect it and send it back? Good Sherlocking, guys. Way to go. Great. Okay, go. You can go. Oh, go. You got him? You bump? Okay. Amu gets bumped. Oh, nicely done. Good angle. So, as a review, the tactical technical section of your training session can use situation training. Why we use it is that it's an effective method because it helps players learn tennis in harmony with the nature of the game, which is an open skill and therefore requires tactical adaptation. In other words, technique that can adopt 
with neutral, offense, and defensive actions. What we do is to define situations in a shot cycle, which identifies a problem and a solution for every shot. And finally, how we do it is to use a location-based approach and split the court into a grid so players can learn tactical play, problem solving, and decision making in all parts of the court.